Hello and welcome to my senior year fellows project. My name is Megan Owen and for the past 12 months I have been participating in documenting the restoration of a 1962 Jaguar Mark II. The car came to us from California with no brakes, a non-running engine, a very tired interior, and many parts that were just worn out. The reason for buying a California car is that the car has little to no rust. This means that the restoration is mechanical and cosmetic only. I've broken up the restoration into four episodes, the engine, the suspension, the engine bay, and interior and paint. This episode will be focusing on the engine. Shortly after we received the car, we made a vain attempt at starting it, but we quickly realized that the engine needed a complete overhaul. We then started the process of removing the engine, starting with the bonnet, or hood. This was a multi-person job to ensure that there was no damage on the bonnet. We safely stored the bonnet in our basement until it gets painted and put back under the car. Before removing the engine, we ran a compression test. As you can see, the gauge of the number four cylinder was only showing 30 pounds of pressure, much less than the 150 to 160 pounds the other cylinders were registering. We definitely had a problem, so we proceeded with the job of removing the engine from the car. We removed the carburetors, the inlet manifold, the exhaust manifolds, the dynamo, starter motor, distributor, and anything else that would come off easily. I then put the lifting hooks onto the cylinder head bolts and we were ready to haul the engine. We moved the car out of the garage and put it back under the car lift. This provided the support for the engine hoist. Then came the tricky job of getting the engine out of the very cramped engine bay. As you can see, there was a lot of discussion and thought that went into the best way to remove the engine. We had disconnected the engine from the gearbox and with a lot of wiggling back and forth and help from some levers, the engine was finally clear. When we took a good look at the engine, we saw how dirty the engine really was. It needed a complete overhaul and a good paint job to look brand new. Once we had the engine on the floor, we had to remove the torque converter and put the engine onto an engine stand. That's coming off. So all of these rocker cover bolts need to come off and get bagged. They're chrome bolts, so we're gonna to have to clean them differently. I'll take this off. I'll take the water pump off. There's lots of ancillary things, so there's plenty to be done. Between my dad and I, we started the cylinder head removal. With an engine that had not been apart for at least 40 years, things don't always come apart easily. And the cylinder head removal turned into a family project, with my mom and my brother John being roped in to help. But with a lot of brute force and the use of some two by fours as a lever, it eventually came free. With the cylinder head off, we could see what the issues were with the number four cylinder. It's got a flat end to it. What it means is that valve is leaking. That's what's called a burned out valve. So that one will need replacing. You see these others, they're all very clean. That one is flat, that one is burnt. With the cylinder head off, we turned the engine upside down and proceeded to remove the sump, the timing gear, the oil pump, the crankshaft, and then removed the pistons one by one. The next job was cleaning and buffing the cam covers and degreasing the engine so that we could repaint it to a gleaming shiny black. We then started the rebuild by putting new compression rings and oil control rings on the pistons. The crankshaft was sent away so that it would work with the modern rear oil seal and polish like new. With all new crankshaft bearings, the crankshaft was put into place and the main bearing cap put in place as well. The pistons could then be inserted into the cylinder bores and everything tightened to the correct tightness with a torque wrench. Once that was complete, the distributor drive timing gear and oil pumps could be reinstalled. The timing gear is a chain driven system on the Jaguar XK engine. There is a lower chain that drives an intermediate pulley that in turn drives the top chain. We sprayed the sump and the timing gear cover in a beautiful silver. While tightening the top chain of the mounting plate, I over tightened a nut and broke a stud. We then had to remove the plate and remove the broken stud. My dad had to make the stud himself because it was completely out of stock everywhere. 
With the new stud in place, we could then put the timing plate back on and continue. Once all the timing gear was in place, the front cover could be put on with a light coating of gasket sealer. With the timing cover in place, the newly painted sump could go on as well. Rebuilding the cylinder head is in many ways the most complex part of an engine rebuild. In the case of the Jaguar XK engine, the cylinder head has the twin overhead camshafts and the valve gear, all which needs careful attention prior to the head being put back onto the cylinder block. The first job is to remove the camshafts by removing their bearing caps. The end caps are bagged and marked to make sure that they are reassembled in the same place. Once the cams have been removed, cleaned, and inspected, the cam followers and adjustment shims are removed. Once all eight have been removed, the valves themselves are next. This involves compressing the valves and removing the springs that keep them shut. The valves are then cleaned using a wire wheel and are reseated. This is achieved by using grinding paste and a stick with a rubber suction cup to grind new seat faces. What we're going to do is to test the seating of the inlet valves. Megan has ground the inlet valves in and they're now back in place. And what we do is we pour water into the inlet ports and see if they leak to see if they're sealed. As you can see, the valves are leaking water, which means that all the valves that are leaking need to be re-grinded again. The valve clearances in the XK engine are adjusted by putting different thickness shims. In the video, you can see me using a feeler gauge to check the clearances and my dad using a micrometer to check the thickness of the shims under the cam follower. Once the correct shims have been put in place, the clearances are retested. Testing valves to see if they're seated or not. The way you do it is you fill the chambers with water, you get an airline, and then you push air into the, uh, into the port. And if you get no bubbles, you're good. This one, After using two different methods to test the valve seating, it is back to valve grinding. Once all the valves are seated, the camshafts can be refitted once again ensuring the clearances are correct. When complete, the cylinder head can be refitted onto the block. The timing chains can be put in place and correctly tensioned, and that is the end of the engine rebuild. Even though the engine rebuild is complete, the engine is no good without a working transmission. Early in the process, we had removed the transmission after first removing the prop shaft and the rear transmission mounting. Once out, the transmission was sent off to be rebuilt due to the complexity of an automatic gearbox. Once the engine and transmission were rebuilt, we could bolt them back together and install the two as a single unit. Being very careful not to damage the engine bay, which had been repainted while the engine was out, the engine was slowly lowered into place. It turned into a neighborhood event with my mom and two friends lending a hand.